everyone, it's Leanna from Love Learning with Leanna. Today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to get started with Google Classrooms and how to add your very first class. So keep watching. Also, school's out. Okay, so once you log on, you're going to be able to see this home page. And so here are some of my classes. Um, if you want to create a class, go ahead and click the plus button and create class. Once you click that link you are going to be able to put in your class name and section and whatever other information you'd like to include to make sure your students know exactly which classroom they're in. Uh, once you do that go ahead and create cl uh, create and I'm going to be creating a sample class to work out of. So once you log on to your classroom you're going to see this home page that you'll always look on the left hand side you'll see the calendar to-do list and all your classes that you've created and on the main page you'll be able to see your classwork that you create um, the people where you'll be able to add students or teachers and your grades so now let's try to add some students you're going to click the people tab um, and the teacher section is if you want to add another enrichment teacher, you can do it here. Just put in their email. Um, and for the students, there are two ways you can do it, by name or by code, uh, by email or by code. And the code is listed right down there. But it's, there's also another section um, where you can find that code. Um, I, if you look in the very front page and you click that little button, here is the class code that your students need to log on to your classwork. So if you're gonna let your parents know via email or phone call or text, that is the code you want them to enter once they log on to Google Classroom with their school email. I have created a template for a letter to be sent home with your code that you can edit in. So if you need that, it'll be down in the section below. Okay, so now I wanna go over some basics for Google Classroom. You can change your theme by clicking that button and then just looking through to see what background you want for the very top. This is what you and your students will be able to see. I'm just gonna click a random one. I, I'm a robotics teacher, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the, the engineering looking one. And then um, you can upload your own photo if you didn't like any of those. But some of the other features here is this streaming um, announcements page. Um, where you'll be able to add to every class you're logged on by clicking all the other classes or you can just add it to one class um, if you have different subjects you're teaching. You um, can share with your class whatever you'd like. You can add any type of document or YouTube video and you can post it. Um, if you can look here you can see you can try to add something from Google Drive by uploading it. Um, you may also add any type of YouTube video or a separate file from your computer. And you can post it at that moment or you can publish it for a certain time. And this is a great option if you want to schedule multiple posts, maybe one per day. That way you're not in front of your computer every morning at 7 a.m. to share your morning announcement. And this is a really great option. Now, and this is where if you save your announcement, this is where it'll show up and then you can post it that morning or whatever time you want to post it. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. So now let's look at some assignments. Go ahead, click on the classwork tab and you'll be able to see this page. Um, Google Calendar is a link to your Google Calendar with all the due dates for the assignments. These are the current assignments for my classes. Um, that main page, once you go back, I'm gonna go ahead and unclick some of these, um, but once you go back to your Google Classroom page, you'll be able to see a class drive folder. And, and this is connected, it, it is automatically created once you create this classroom and it includes everything, every type of um, activity that you're doing that's started in Google Suite. So sheets, docs, so this is an example of one of my other classrooms. Um, and this was a quiz my students entered. So this is was automatically created for me and I can easily go back and see how my students did. And these are the other documents that I had uploaded to the classroom that were saved into this document. So it's a great catch-all place location to find all your resources. 
So let's get to the fun part. Um, let's create a, an assignment. So go ahead and click Create and Assignment. And you're going to be able to put in a title for your assignment, something that the students will be able to tell. And here you can choose which classes you'd like to add it to. All of them, some of them, or just one of them. And you can choose which students. So if, you, if it's like a, an English assignment and they're, um, you can change that. The points and the due date, all of that is able to be fixed to whatever you'd like. Um, and due dates are great for the students as a visual reminder. And the topic is if you have different topics, and I'll show you how to create that, you can choose the topic. Each class you have, you're able to choose three assignments where you can click this originality report. And it basically, especially for essays, you can make sure that the students aren't copying each other. Um, so that's a great option. You can save your scheduled posts or you can post it there. And then um, we're going to go ahead and actually do one together. Um, but first, let's create topics. I love topics. They keep things organized. And so um, if you are a multiple subjects teacher, you can create topics for math, science, ELA. Um, if you're a um, single subject teacher, you can create it by periods. So period one, period two, um, all of that jazz. And it just makes things much more organized for both you and your students to be able to find assignments um, and assess them. So I'm going to go ahead and create all of these and create our first assignment in one of those topics. And here I'm creating just a writing assignment. Obviously, everybody's assignments are going to look different. So what I'm going to do is instead of writing writing, I'm going to write the actual question into the title. What is your favorite thing to do? And in the instructions section, I'm going to add all the information that I want my students to see, um, the expectations, you can add um, sentence starters, any other types of prompts, anything that will help your students create this assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up that and I can add any links, but today I'm not going to. Um, what I'm going to be doing is assigning it to my sample class for all my students, keeping the points to 100, but I will change the due date because due dates are so important for our students as a visual reminder. They can see it on their end. And I'm going to choose writing as my topic. And I'm going to go ahead and write down assignment number one. Um, I, f I feel like my students do a better job when there is an assignment number, and I'm going to go ahead and click assign. I like to assign my assignments right away. Um, it's all out there and the students can work through it on their own timing, especially when we're distance learning. And if I had written or chosen the wrong topic, I could always drag it into the correct one just like that. So now we're going to go ahead and create a quiz assignment. I love quizzes. I love forms. This is where you use to create your quizzes. And you can go ahead and enter in your title and the instructions. This video is not going to go into that much depth for the Google Forms, but if you want another video that does a lot more with how to use Google Forms in multiple ways, I will create that. Just leave it in the comment section below. So what I did was clicked on the quiz, the form, and in this section you'll be able to create your title, a description for your students of what the quiz is, and then so right now I'm creating a description. And here I, is where I enter the quiz information. It could be short answer, paragraph, multiple choice, or check boxes. And in each quiz, you get to choose what each answer is. So you can have mixed form of quizzes. And this is such a great tool for your classrooms. Um, and it's a great way to assess kind of where your students are in a quick way. Um, so you can always change all of this information. And once again, if you want more um, how to in this Google Forms, let me know in the comment section below. So Google is great because it saves everything automatically. Go ahead and change your uh, form to whatever title you'd like. This is so it, when you save it in your Google Classroom and it uploads into your Google Drive folder, you'll have that title. And you can go back to the class and if you refresh, you can see your assignment already there the math multiplication quiz. 
If you're anything like me, uh, you probably forgot something in your assignment. You can always edit your assignment and reassign it, and the students will be able to get the updated version. And so you assign your assignment. And voila, you, I didn't put a topic, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it into the math section. And since this is a, a quiz, you can always see who turned it in and how many students were assigned. I don't have any class uh, kids in my a sample class, uh, but you can always do that for um, all the assignments. Check how many turned in and how many still have assigned but not turned in. Um, and this is where you can also grade. Personally, it feels like Google Classroom, grading in Google Classroom has always been easier for me than grading um, paperwork. Uh, less mess and it's just easier to assign points and it does all the equations and math for you. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and post a question. This is just a prompt that you want your students to answer. Um, you can have them watch a video and then um, answer something. You can have them check in how they're feeling from 1 to 10. Our district does this as a mindfulness activity. Um, you can provide instructions, but always know that you can provide a question without the instructions because it's completely optional. I'm going to go ahead and have my students check in and I'm going to write down the week, the day, and how are you feeling. And so in the instructions I'll write that. And you don't need to create points for every assignment. For something like this, I won't create an uh, uh, any points, but I accidentally published it with 100 points. But I won't be creating points for every assignment. Um, I forgot that I didn't have a topic for check-in, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new topic in here and go ahead and ask. And it publishes it right away. And if you, yep, right there, you'll be able to see my check-in. And the students need to click view question and they'll be able to, um, on their side, they have a little box they can write into. So now we're going to just post material. I'm going to have them watch a video or I'm going to have them uh, view a, an image. And this, they don't need to respond in any way, but I always like to have them respond in the comment section below. It shows me either they watched the video or they viewed the image or um, anything that I'm posting. And they can do something as simple as write your initials or write your name in the comment section if you viewed the video or write down one thing you learned from this video in the comment section. And I like to do this because it makes my Google Classroom more interactive. Anyway, my students. So here I'm actually adding a video by clicking YouTube and adding one. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in science because it's science material and post it. If you want a video on how to make Google Classroom more interactive, let me know in the comment section below. That's also something I love to do. Now we are going to learn how to reuse posts. I try to click reuse posts in my sample class, but I don't have any assignments, any um, any things that, that I've done, so it's not creating anything for me. But if I go into my other class where I've assigned lots of work and um, we've done all this stuff, I can always so click reuse post and all my classroom work, um, I can reuse it and it shows up in my in that current space and you can change it according to whatever you want to change it. So if you don't want to add the same directions and you have somewhere you can reuse, do that and it saves a lot of time. And I'm going to go ahead and exit out because I'm not going to do this. I'm going to go back to the sample class. And um, this left hand corner you have to do's. This is for all the students to be able to see how many turned in, how many um, have been graded, and you can look at all of your classrooms. The students also have this to-dos and it allows them to see what work they have to do. Um, maybe teach your students that this area exists and they can look at it. So that's it folks. Um, I'm gonna go back to my classrooms and this is all I have. Um, I hope you all get to use Google Classroom and enjoy it. I hope that once this time is over, you'll be able to use it even more so when you're back in the classroom with your students. 
So that's it everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want any other videos or how to's, please leave that in the comment section below. Also, the best way to learn Google Classroom or any type of software online or anything technology related is to just explore. Um, play, play with it, have fun, and I wish you the best. Play it. <laughs>